Most people I know want to make money, and we can today, although we're going to be making some funny money for drawing practice. If you want to join in, have some fun, learn some new skills, you're in the right place. That will be here in the Work Smarter Not Harder Dojo with me, Tony Harmer, aka The Design Ninja. All right, so this is going to be heavy on the appearances. So you're going to need the appearance panel for this one in just a minute or two. So we'll go to the window menu and choose appearance if you don't see it in your interface already. Then we're going to get the type tool. So tap T on your keyboard to get the type tool. Okay, or click on it inside of the toolbox and then come along and click to create some text, I'm going to replace the placeholder here with a dollar sign, like so, and I'm going to change the font. For mine, I want to use this one, plenty black, although you can use whatever you want. And then tap escape, just to leave the type there. And while we can keep this completely live, we're going to outline it. So shift command O, shift control O on Windows, like so. Now this is a shade too big, I think, so I'm gonna bring mine down to about that. I'm in a 1920, 1080 document, I think here. So around about that. Any size doesn't really matter, to be too honest. I'm just thinking about it being easier for you to see and the final effect working. Now when you outline text these days, it comes in as a group. So I'm just going to ungroup that, Shift Command G, Shift Control G, to go back to the compound path that was in that group. Then I'm going to highlight the fill just here and I'm going to duplicate that fill like so. And so now I've got two fills. On the lower of those fills, I'm going to change the color. I'm going to choose orange, I think, uh, for this one. And then keeping that highlighted in the appearance panel, I'm going to go to the effects, which you can do either here in the properties panel or up in the effect menu and choose convert to shape and rectangle. I'm gonna set this one to absolute and then dial up the width. So I'm clicking in that field and then scrolling with my trackpad here. Okay, although of course you could use the arrow keys to do this as well. I'm gonna take that out to about 900 pixels. I think maybe around about that 850 I think will work pretty good for mine yours may vary of course because of your type okay or the type shape then I'll change the height here and for mine I'm gonna go to about I don't know 380 that looks pretty good to me and I'll hit okay I'm then going to duplicate that fill by clicking the plus down at the bottom of the appearance panel and this time I'm going to choose a pattern. Now I haven't got any suitable patterns here, so what I'm going to do is go to the loader and then go to patterns, basic graphics and lines. And that library will open up like so. Now the thing I'm after is going to be this half an inch lines just here. So I will click that, it gets added to my shape and also imported into the swatches. So I can close that now. And keeping this fill targeted, I'm going to go to the effects menu and come down to path and offset path. And then I'm going to bring this down into a negative value like so. Something like that is pretty good, I think. Nice clean edge around the side there. Okay, let's zoom in on this so it's easier for you to see. Now I'm going to add a stroke to this. Now the stroke will add around the outside by default here of the actual character. It's important that you see that it's actually adding around the character. I'm gonna make that nice and big and wide, just there for the moment. Then I'm going to go to the fill, the one with the pattern in just here. Okay, and I'm going to hold down the Option key or Alt on Windows and drag that rectangle up and drop it on the stroke. There you go, to duplicate that like so. 
I'm also going to do the same with the offset path and now that's matching that edge. Let's bring that down a bit. I was being a bit super keen uh, just there. Although, do you know what? I think what might work really, really well here is if we actually use a pattern brush. So I'm going to go to the brushes and then again, I'll go to the loader just here. Let's have a look at borders and maybe borders decorative. Let's take a look at that. Not entirely sure that any of those are going to work immediately, but let's have a look at what else is in there. Okay, no, maybe nothing there, but fortunately, we can scroll through the borders using these arrow keys. So I'm just going to click through a few of these and see if there's anything that takes my fancy. Just here, of course, you can use whatever you want to use on yours. Okay, but I'm just having a look there. Mm, not entirely sure if any of those meet my needs just yet. Okay, now we're in the novelty sort of region. And then we've gone to bristle brushes. I'm going to go backwards just a bit here. Let's just have another look at one of these here. That's pretty good. Let's see, go backwards one or two more until we get to the watercolor. So we're back into the brushes. And maybe, maybe none of those just at the moment. So I'm going to go ahead and use this one here, I think. This one with the sort of knot work going into it. So I'll choose that. Now I want to change this to black. So let's just have a quick look and see if we can do that. If we go to the appearance panel, now you see it's not changing. So back to the brush, double click on the brush there. Okay, and make sure that the key color is set. Okay, and choose tints. Okay, or tints and shades if you've got multiple colors in there or even hue shift. I'm going to say OK for tints, like so, and apply that to the strokes. Then we can go ahead here and we can see how that works. Do you know what? I think we're going to do that one more time and we'll try tints and shades. There you go. That's actually working perfectly just there and apply that to the strokes. Now that's working nicely. However, the fill has got white inside of it. Our funny money wouldn't have that so what we can do is we can blend that down using multiply which white is invisible in multiply so that works pretty well just there nice now we can go ahead and we can add a border to the dollar sign just here so we'll go ahead and get this fill just here and we'll duplicate that okay but this time i'm going to change the color temporarily okay so we can clearly see it this time I'm going to change the convert to shape to an ellipse, like so. I can apply a new effect just there to that. Actually, let me just cancel that and just have a quick look and see. Of course, that's the outer rectangle. That's fine. So I'll remove that from there. So we'll drag the rectangle down and we'll try convert to shape again. Although we could, if I just undo that, just have a quick look here. We could actually change that to ellipse just here let's do it that way again absolute and we'll make these the same in both sides so let's get the width exactly the way we want it to start off with so maybe I don't know 150 is working for me just there okay then I'll go and set this one to 150 like so okay so that should have updated there we go just a little bit laggy there let's turn the preview off and on that's the quickest way to do it and that does need to be a bit larger okay so we'll go to 180 on both sides just there perfect now we've done that what we can do is we can go ahead and change the color back to the orange the same as everything else and we can bring this up in the stacking order i'm going to just detach my appearance panel so it's easier for you to see Okay, and we'll take this up over the fill with the actual pattern in it. So grab the fill there like so, and then take that up above that. And now you can see, okay, that it's sitting over the pattern. It's also sitting over the text. So I went one too far. So we'll go over that. There we are. Perfect. Just there. Now we'll add a new stroke. Now we could do that down the bottom here. 
But here's the hidden shortcut. Option Command or Alt Control and Slash will add you a new stroke. Okay, bring that down in the stacking order so it's just above the ellipse there. Okay, and then Option, drag the ellipse onto the stroke. So now we've got a nice stroke around that. Pretty good. Okay, our bank money there is sorted. If you were worried about the pattern here, the lines, and you didn't like this sort of border going on at the bottom, you could actually change that. And you can also see, because of the multiply, it's actually making its way into the pattern. So we could easily go to that and then change it. So if we twirl that open, okay, and we'll go to offset path just here and bring that down just a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to keep that going until it's down and clear of the pattern. Okay, just up just a little bit now. Perfect. I think that's about it. However, I'd like these lines, okay, to go ahead and be fairly even throughout. So to do that, I'll highlight that pattern and add another effect. I'm going to add distort and transform. Transform Okay, I'm going to make sure that objects is turned off, but patterns is turned on. Okay, then I can go ahead to move vertically. I'm just going to move this up and down. Let's have a look here. Yeah, that's obviously going too far. So let's just move that perfect just a little bit more. So I think around about there we go. Three pixels sorts that out for me. I'm going to hit OK. Now we're pretty good on our banknote. So what I'm going to do is zoom out and then I'm going to group this. OK, so this becomes a completely separate group just now. Okay, Once I've got the group, I'm going to add an effect. I'm going to go to Distort and Transform, Transform. OK, and then I'm going to rotate this around. So I'm clicking in that field just here or using the widget here to move this around. OK, you can see where it's moving. I'll move it from the bottom left hand corner. There we go. Like that. Let's just increase that value. Just a bit like so. OK, perfect. I'm making sure that everything is transforming just there. Now I'm going to start to add some copies. OK, now I'll change down the angle just there because that was a bit keen. So bring that out like so. So I'll increase the number of copies just there like so, just using the arrows on my keyboard. And if I want to, I can move them. So I can move them in horizontally. That will change the center of the transformation. OK, and vertically. Let's bring those in like so. Yeah, actually, I think that needs to be moved quite a bit more on the... Uh, horizontal however not that much so let's bring that back down there we go and change the horizontal move actually I think bring that in and further in and further in like so until you get it the way you want it so it might take a little bit of playing around with once you've done that hit OK and once again group this because then you can transform that group separately or you should be able to. So if I go and add another transform effect on here, OK, I'm going to apply a new effect. Let's just see if we can rotate all of that stuff there. There we go. And once you've done that, all we need to do is hit OK. OK, so I'm just going to move that into place now. And that works pretty well there. However, look. This isn't working terribly well without anything to kind of delineate the border around the money. So what I'm going to do is double click, OK, to go into isolation mode and click. That gets me my whole main object just here. I'm going to add a new stroke to this. OK, so now I've got my new stroke. I'm then going to option drag or alt drag the rectangle onto the side. And now they're all clearly delineated just there so we can see what's what and in fact if you wanted to you could even go further okay and to one of the fills maybe the one at the bottom just here you could go ahead and add something like an outer glow so if we went to stylize 
outer glow just there okay and then just change that to multiply okay and then change the opacity of that I'd say something low like around a 25% would be pretty good and just a small blur and you can see how that's working throughout so you've got something there that is completely flexible and that's it for now I'll see you next time here in the work smarter not harder dojo see ya